Charlie Baker's here. I'm Danny Kelly, and with us, I'm delighted to say for another 15 minutes or so, is Danny Cipriani, um, whose book, as I say, unusually for sports books, which normally are called things like I am fantastic and yeah. <laughs> aren't I great, um, asked the question, who am I? Um, Danny, I wanted to... You've used a... I want to find out why you were in a place where you were not in proper touch with the public image of yourself. And you talked about, you've talked about your childhood there several times. You mentioned it. So I'm going to intrude here and ask you about your childhood because mm -hmm. I know that your dad um, went back to, I think, the Caribbean yeah. um, when you were a, a tiny baby. Um, and yet you've talked to yourself being alone. Talk to me about your childhood. Do you, think, do you think that was what gave you this constant need for, to use your word, validation of people to like you or tell you you're great, which eventually led you to a place where you weren't happy? Yeah, there there is definitely a, a a huge part of that, and you know, I, everyone everyone for me is born with a gift, and for me, I was fortunate to fall into something that it had a career attached to it, so I was able to go and play rugby. Um, and then when I backtrack everything, the reason why I got into rugby it was love in the first place, and then ultimately everything that came with it was all these lessons and all these things to experience. But I still had a childhood along the side of it that was ongoing and things that were happening within my life that come out later on in life. It happens for everyone and it was coming out in my behaviours and there was times that I didn't even know that I could get out of that cycle of behaviour. It was so repetitive, it was so consistent. Um, my mind was so chaotic. Uh, I didn't ever think I would be able to be with one uh, beautiful woman and spend the rest of my life with her and like, I'm unbelievably grateful that... This is Victoria. Yeah, you know, she's the most incredible woman and... You know, f for me to even to be at that point without any wondering eye that I used to feel or have, it it is com it's the most peaceful, loving place to be because I don't have that need to be creating a flirtatious environment or lo locking eye with another woman or in any mm. example of that. Because for me, I was like, yeah, no, I feel enough when I'm doing things like that and receiving that. You don't need to beat yourself up too much about what, what you used to be. Yeah, no, let, yeah, me for sure. let me tell you from much further down the line, <laughs> okay, let's uh, do we it. all do some pretty <laughs> dim <do> stuff. <laughs> um, you know, I, I look back on the years I spent in the music industry, uh, rumbling around Soho at three o'clock in the morning, and I think... Dan, you're such a nice bloke now. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't need what, to be... Were you not doing good things yeah. in Soho, Danny? I was, <laughs> I was behaving in a way that I would now... Um, I can't use the word, uh, it rhymes with banker, that I would that I would say, if I saw someone else doing it now, I'd go, look, look at that. Look at that there over, over there. But, you know... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad at any of my experiences no, that I've been in God, like, gone, because ultimately everything leads you into a point like we're, we're in a, a society where everything is put down your throat to become something, work hard, achieve, but, you know humans have been here for a lot longer than that so i don't think those are the the values that necessarily are the most highest and attainable ones right. for the most peaceful life let's get let's get to the crux of this now but let's do uh, it because i'm a sports radio station yes Danny. the way you're talking the things you're saying and the way you are appear on the surface to me to be exact opposites contradictions to the way professional rugby union works i mean we see them talking mm -hmm. about the group and the work ethic and the the need to overpower people and uh, you, you know even the documentaries they can't hide it the, 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 the level of i mean i don't i, I just don't think it, it sounds like you would fit in in modern rugby union but i mean i may have that so wrong because you've said you've inspired teams do, do you know what there's loads of people i've played with that uh get on extremely well with like within mm. the environments but for me within the sport of rugby it lacks a certain amount of vulnerability because to go and create magic and to go and do things that are unexpected, you have to be vulnerable to do it. If you feel like you have the answer, if you feel like you have to be tough and strong and work hard, and that's your route of going and that's your focus, you're going to miss out on the magic of what could be. You, you look at footballers and the way they play the game and the high skill efforts that they have and the emotional intelligence that those guys have and the, the relationship they have with their coaches when, they're, when they, you know, they bond and they hug after games. You don't see that within rugby. Um, it's a relatively new thing in, in, in soccer as well. It is, it? Yeah. but then you also see, when you see the, the best of the best type coaches, your Steve Kerrs, your Phil Jacksons, your Pep Guardiola's, the relationship Pep would have with his players, that takes a certain character, a certain type of man who has done a lot of self-assessment, reflection on himself, and he doesn't, he doesn't lead with fear. I suppose the old school tough nut rugby union people would say, it's all very well talking like that, Danny. Um, about say football players, they haven't got Etzevets running at them. Um, you look at the two most physically demanding sports in UFC and boxing. The whole show and the build-up for it is all macho ego talk. Let's sell this fight. 
but they're training day in day out the art of boxing you have to stay relaxed in your shoulders you have to stay relaxed in the cage you have to stay relaxed when someone's attacking you in that way and then that's when you can pick your shots and fight they're not actually thinking i want to kill you in this moment because Mm -hmm. then all that does is build tension build stress build extra weight on your shoulders in that current moment i'm getting less and less comfortable the way boxers talk to each other i'm going to take your head off and all the rest of it yeah they they do it to create that fanfare and that noise but if they don't if if the if the if the bout is interesting enough they don't I, i don't like it myself agreed we're in an era of attention so you have the loudest voice with the most crazy thing that you said then you're going to receive you know either hate or love or whatever it might be but for me the way that i want to lead and um and down yeah all all that stuff if that's what people are, are going for you know and that's just not what my life has been about even though people have written a lot about me and from the outside there's snippets and there's lots of people assuming and judging in in certain ways and i understand that they're they're looking at a very small part of my life but I also was trying to figure out who I was along the way of this whole journey because my my route into this world was slightly different, you know, as everyone's is. Everyone has a different start to life and, you know, I've got to a point where I have the most beautiful family, you know, two beautiful stepchildren and two beautiful step-grandchildren. I'm, I'm loving my days. You're a granddad, Dan. I'm a, I'm a step-granddad, <laughs> Danny. Ah. A seven-year-old and one-year-old, Rosie and Lily, and they are the most beautiful little lights and, you know, I spend so much time with them hanging out and it, that you know they they do bring real joy to me so we've read about your past there we go in the book you know you read about your past it's a rich and full past <laughs> yeah Danny. It's, it's, it's i think colorful, it's a, lot, a colorful life it's a colorful. good life you've not left anything kept, i kept nothing out in half the t- of it yeah, like, good, <laughs> volume two there you go what's in the future can you can you be the change that rugby union needs i don't know about that i, I can't but all, all i know is when i go back when my ego was attached to what I was doing and I was trying to achieve and succeed and I wasn't getting what I was getting and I was feeling less of and I was getting players player of the year and I didn't get selected for the World Cup or I was, Mm. you know, pushing the boundary and I wasn't getting what I felt I I deserved or wanted. And it really put me on some soul searching. And then I get to this point I'm at now and I reflect all the way back and love was the driving force that we're all born with inside of us, but our experiences take us away from it. And that's what got me into rugby, into this magical journey of where I'm at now. I truly feel like my life's just beginning. I don't know which way that's gonna go. I don't Mm. know how it's gonna look, but I'm gonna continue to commit to this energy state for the rest of my life because all I know in these last six months, 12 months, 18 months, I've been enjoying my days in a, in a way which I have no control over. I'm experiencing things on a day-to-day basis that really, you know, fill my heart with with joy and love. So um, whether it be speaking to, I get so many beautiful messages from other athletes and st- struggles that they've gone through. And I happily share and speak to them through my experience because I've been through the whole mill of it. So I like to do that, you know, with some young footballers or rugby players yeah. in that light, um, coaching in, within rugby or any any environment. That, I don't know how it's going to look because I know we're also in a bit of a spiritual warfare in this country where everyone's minds are quite chaotic and they're focused on the current dopamine hits and what's in front of them and, mm-hmm. and how do I find this and that because we're all driven in the society of what's going on. And I think through COVID, you know, through falling in love and me having a bit of time out to really like look at myself has allowed me to dive deep within and there's lots I'd love to share with people along the way um, and how that looks I have no control over I didn't know how my career was going to go and it was uh, is, there, is there any part of you that thinks it would have been different if you'd been 5 foot 6 18 stone had cauliflower ears and, <laughs> and, a, and a front row prop I don't know Lou man said prop I don't I don't I don't think about things like that because yeah. you'd have been a less interest in newspapers <laughs> there you go <laughs> do, do you know what I, I it's really sent me some places where I've had to come out of it and and find you know some people go into dark places and don't get out or they just are okay and that's what we see a lot of but there's ways that you can transform it into having a beautiful life day to day and commit into an energy state and even if good and bad things come your way you can commit and keep your frequency at a certain level and that's what i love to do right now because it means that i'm enjoying the fruits of life Mm -hmm. um but i'm also willing to have tough conversations about what's going on within rugby but for, in terms of through my experience i'm not doing it from a hateful or a bitter eye i'm i'm also going to speak about the media i'm not going to shy away from that you know what happened to caroline 3 years ago mm-hmm. was a huge driving force for me to go within and look even further at yeah. myself because it broke lots of things inside of me like lots of things crashed that day you know i looked emotionally unstable because i had to let things out that were i'd been holding on for so long but nothing changed so for me I do feel like I've got a mission and a purpose to keep delivering in the way I am and 
I don't know what I'm going to say until you ask the question. So ultimately, I'll just deliver it uh, as such. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.